Hey, it's very exciting to be here at TOA. I'm Daniel Margulies and I'm here with Chris Gorgolevsky and we're going to talk a bit about attention and the effects of technology yes. on attention. So can you tell me a bit about the topic that you spoke about here? Yes, so today I, I was uh, honored to, to be able to speak about uh, how modern technology is influencing our ability or inability to sustain attention or focus. So I was, I was talking a little bit about multitasking and, and how multitaskers are influenced in, in, in um, tests that, that uh, probe our ability to filter out distractors as well as task switching. Um, I, also was, yeah, I also was talking about uh, uh, internet uh, as you know, perceived from the perspective of addiction, uh, which is kind of a neat way of looking at it because you, you get the reward and you've got the, the constant stimuli and you actually do get some kind of uh, withdrawal sometimes. And so how did you first get interested in this topic? Well, of course, like as, as one of my colleagues uh, uh, would say, uh, all research is me-search. Uh, and I think that was the case in, uh, with me as well. So, so I, I found myself uh, having troubles with focusing. Um, and that's why I got interested in the topic, because it, intuitively I thought this is related to technology. But I have to say that the, we don't have an ultimate question, answer to that. And there. So that's what I was going to ask you. Do you see any directions for solutions or ways of dealing with the changes in technology and how they change our cognition? Excellent question. I, uh, I think the first thing we have to figure out is, is to disentangle whether it is really the influence of, the te of technology on ourselves or whether there are certain personality types that have this intrinsic propensity towards using technology. And that would require longitudinal studies. And when we do that, and probably it's not going to be a binary thing, it's going to be a mixed bag, then we can try to figure out what kind of lifestyle interventions and what, what changes to technology we can make um, to, to make people uh, more happy with the long-term um, effects of, of using technology. How have you found the place? Uh, you, you work in a scientific uh, yes, lab, yes. in a scientific context. It's an excellent lab, I have to say. And, uh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. How did you find the community here and the different interactions? And do you see a place for the interaction between basic science and these kind of technology startup environments and community? Oh, it's it's a very very exciting scene. You've know, got a lot of passionate people with lots of energy and ambition, and it's it's fantastic to be here. Uh, and I think that we, it's from a scientific point of view, uh, we, we can definitely provide a solution in terms of quantitative research and answering questions using scientific methods uh, and on the same the, the same kind on the other side we can we can learn a lot about how to creatively use technology mm. uh, and I think that the, this uh, this collaboration that could, could start here would be tremendously interesting and it seems like you've chosen a topic that very much addresses the forefront of both of those um, yes yes I'm, I'm very like personally interested in of course but uh, I, I think it's very interesting and it's it's very challenging as well because a moving target. You see, like the technology mm -hmm. business is, is moving so quickly, and it's changing so rapidly. So if you if you make a study right now, um, it might not be uh, relevant in two three years because you studied the, the influence of notifications on phones, and like in three years we're gonna have. Uh, um, smart glasses that will be a completely different way of interacting um, so, so it's, it is very tricky but at the same time because technology is so prominent uh, I think it's a very very important topic and, and, and um, big companies big and small companies uh, that influence how technology is made um, should be more and more interested in, in, in the long-term effects and how can we basically make people happier with how they use technology more general question of what are the open questions that you would like to see addressed by bringing together the scientific research and the leading edge of technology development and um, public interface. Uh, if you could bring these communities together to answer some of the open questions, what are the ones that you see as the priority right now? So there is a great opportunity and um, how much and so how to, what the quality of data is that is collected. Uh, by those uh, uh, tech companies. And I think this is a very delicate issue. There's, there's a lot of promise and there's a lot of potential of using this data to understand uh, better uh, how human beings 
interact and behave. But we have to make really sure that uh, everything is done in an ethical way. And we, we take into account uh, the participants or the users themselves and make it explicitly clear uh, how, we, how we use the data. But there is a great potential in, in, in this interaction because uh, we can bring uh, uh, modern uh, methods in analyzing data and conducting uh, experiments um, and on the other side we can access a uh, lot more data and at the same time this data will be uh, more relevant because it's acquired in a more ecological uh, manner. So people are doing the things the way they would do it uh, uh, on every day instead of being uh, brought mm -hmm. into the lab, into this artificial uh, environment. So, <laughs>